Tell us also the if you know also the the reason you put out for God and the pagan religion. Yeah, kind of. So welcome, <coughs> welcome to Faith Family United Church of Christ uh, Bible study. Uh, we are uh, going through the book of Luke. We are right now we are in Luke chapter five, starting at verse seventeen. And this is the story of Jesus forgives and heals a paralyzed man. Um, as we look at the story, we see that um, the, 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 a, a paralyzed man comes to Jesus. Jesus is in a house, and they, they bring him in, and they lay him before him. And uh, when they could not find a way into the house, uh, they cut a hole in the roof. This is the one where it says cut a hole in the roof. They find him, lower him on his mat through the middle of the crowd. So um, they were they were convinced that Jesus could heal this man, even though he was paralyzed. So um, give you a second to look at that. Um, so it says about halfway through that. Jesus saw their faith. He said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. Then it says, The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, Who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Why do you think Luke kind of puts Jesus in direct opposition to the Pharisees? Because he was. His way of thinking. What do we know about the Pharisees? They believed in the afterlife. They, they believed in the afterlife versus yeah. the Sadducees. Didn't they believe they were God? They were the dead honcho? Well, no, they, they believed that they, they were the moral uh, guardians of, <laughs> of... Of the realm. Yeah, of what was holy and what was not. And you can see here... It says that um, th that he's speaking blasphemy. So what what a lot of times what the Pharisees would do was they would they would take a law like for instance um, you 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 can't um, you can't uh, work on the Sabbath day. Okay, so to keep Sabbath day holy, don't work. And then they would put what they call what we call hedges around that. Okay, so you're not allowed to work on the Sabbath. So they would come up with lists. This is what you can do, and this is what you can't do. This is, okay, so, well, if I walk somewhere, is that working on the Sabbath day? How well, far? you can work, you can walk up to so far. And so, if you go into a, a very conservative Jewish community um, today, because, like, the whole block will be, you know, Orthodox, or uh, Hasidic Jews, which Orthodox, is, yeah. yeah, Orthodox Jews, and they will, um, They'll have like lines, like little um, clothes lines, or like clothes lines, strung on the sides of the wall. And it's like, what is that? Well, that's you know, you, they'll tether themselves. They'll tether themselves, and that's how far they can walk. So, so that's kind of like what the, the the Pharisees were doing back then. They were building man-made rules so that you didn't break God's rule. They're kind of like, and maybe not so violent but maybe they were in like Iran these groups of religious leaders that go out and find women who don't have their hijabs on the, the Pharisees were kind of like that as well like they went out seeking people who were breaking the rules and trying to enforce them as well maybe not so militantly but definitely you see a lot of evidence in the New Testament of them like wait a minute you, you said that, but what about this? What about that? You know, trying to, like you said, make the rules more stringent than the original intent. So, in in looking for the historical Jesus, this is why I ask that question. Why do you think Luke hits him directly against the Pharisees? The Pharisees never truly gained a, a foothold on their authority until after the destruction of Rome and the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So for Luke to say he was going against the Pharisees, but he's writing much later than Jesus' time, mm -hmm. 
so why do you think now this is this is this is I think it's important and I'll tell you why I think it's important when when we talk today about um, politically let's say politically we talk today about Republicans and we're thinking Republicans in the framework of like please don't make faces I wasn't I was like things are changing um MAGA Republicans MAGA MAGA Republicans and we we, we just clumped all of them together and so what I think is happening um is back then the 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 these people that went around and were the the moral police or the the law police um making sure that everyone no one broke god's law um but they didn't really have the name like they did later and that's where the pharisees came in the pharisees they didn't have the pharisee name in the time of jesus it was kind of like really yes what did they call them it's good um, to know what did they call them teachers of the law so that's what i think that's where he says pharisees and teachers of the law i think what what has happened is luke writing later and the pharisees were big at his time to make an emphasis on on this he put them in Jesus's time. Maybe they were the beginning of it, kind of like the Tea Party, if you will, kind of turned into the the MAGA um, Republicans. Did they have the term Essenes? Essenes? No, Essenes. Essenes. Um, I'm not sure when the Essenes, because they think John was actually part of that, but then, but then the Essenes, they left and, and became kind of hermits, if you will. We, we think of them as like one of the divisions of the, of the Hebrew people. Mm -hmm. And we think of them in that, is that in this period, <coughs> and we've always talked about, at least I've always talked about Sadducees and Pharisees mm -hmm. and the distinction between them mm -hmm. being life after death. And not, but I thought the word existed. I didn't know that it did. It, it, did, it, did, it did exist. But they weren't, they, they weren't a major power that would be able to go around and point fingers at people and tell people what to do. That didn't happen till, till later, like the, almost the turn of, like, I would say the, around the 90s. And, and, and the Sanhedrin? Yeah, was, that was... Well, they were part of the Sanhedrin. That's what it says. I'm, I'm confused. The, the, the point that I'm making is Luke is writing much later than you. It's not like he's, he's, he was there, he saw it, and he wrote it down. Just like today, we see something today and we want to equate it with. Uh, we, we see something to. We, I'm sorry to think. We see something from back several years ago and we want to equate it with what's going on today to make it more relevant and so he said instead of him just saying you know the people that uh the people that teach the law you know maybe there was a couple pharisees in there but they weren't a major political or or religious group that does that make sense i know what you're saying makes sense but i don't think it i don't think it's right <laughs> Doesn't, it, it, I don't think it is applicable to this. Anyway, that's why I brought the question, why do you think he puts it against the Pharisees? And I think that's because when Luke was writing this, the Pharisees were the religious, um, religio-political leaders, and they had a lot of influence. Not so much in Jesus' time. It would have been more the Sanhedrin, the um, the temple guards, and the religious teachers. 
were, were the Sadducees and the Pharisees limited to the Sanhedrin? I mean, weren't all Pharisees a member of the Sanhedrin and all? No. 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 Okay. So, so when the term, the, yeah, yeah, well, that and, and the term uh, um, Sadducees and Pharisees, that's, that's a, 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 a theological viewpoint. We talk about the, 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 the Sadducees didn't believe in an afterlife. And the fair, that's why they're sad, you see. Oh, I forget to touch. Um, and then the Pharisees, they did. Paul was a Pharisee. He, he believed in the, he come in, in the Pharisee teaching. But the, the point is, they didn't become such a, a, a political movement or a, a religious movement and, and have authority until after Jesus had already been crucified. Paul was a Pharisee. Paul was a Pharisee. He was taught in the Pharisee the Pharisee school. So that's see what I'm saying here. Now we we ter, we do use the the term Pharisees and Sadducees, um, as as like they were a, a, a political group or a, a, like you're Republican and I'm Democrat. It, it, it's not that. It's it's the the teaching that they were brought up in, which became a political and and religious. Group of authority, with authority, so that's that's all I was saying. I wasn't trying to say there wasn't they didn't have that teaching during Jesus's time, but I thought that's interesting. If you if you look at it, Jesus doesn't do too much with the Sadducees in Luke. It's mostly the Pharisees, and the interesting part is Luke is supposed to be the spokesperson for Paul, right? He, he does his own research. But he was with Paul, and Paul was taught in the Pharisee school. And look what Paul tried to do at the beginning well, of his career. That could be the reason, reason for the use of the term Pharisee also. Exactly, I think so. I think that puts in mind of Paul, who, when he was, he was still, you know, he wasn't a Christian yet. He went and he persecuted the church. He got papers to go and round up Christians and, and have them stoned to death. As a matter of fact, it says when, when Philip, was it Philip? Stephen, excuse me. Stephen was being stoned to death. He held the coats of the people so they could, you know, throw the stones. So maybe that's another reason why um, he, used, he used the words Pharisee to point, point a finger at them out over the uh, religious zealots they were. Oh, anyway, long, long way to go for a, a short, a short answer. Really, um, who can forgive sin? Who can forgive sin? God. God. Okay. Who else? Is that it? Jesus. So, well, aren't we supposed to be able to forgive sin in other people? Sure, sure. Why couldn't we? I, I, that's what I, that, I think that's... A, you can forgive other people. But it's hard to forget. But you're not standing in and doing what God does. No. Well, the Catholics believe exactly. that the priest can forgive you, right? Yeah. A couple of Hail Marys and a couple of... Because they're right? standing in the spot for well, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. But here's the here's question. So, if the... If the Pharisees and the teachers of the law did not see Jesus as the Christ, as God's Son here on earth, were they right in saying that he's blaspheming? If only God can forgive sin or can, can forgive sin? In their mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in their mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not knowing who Jesus was. Right. Who is this man just going around forgiving sin? The second question to that, follow up question to that. How is this man, why is this man sins forgiven? What, what is the sin? How do they know he was, he's a sin? Did they see him sin? Because he was paralyzed. He's paralyzed. Because of what? He was paralyzed. So he had a, a fault. Oh, that makes him a sinner? And that makes him a sinner? Yes, that was the mindset. That was the mindset. If you have a birth defect, it's because either your one of your parents sinned, 
If you go blind, that's because you sin somewhere. If you if you're born with a deformed arm, you're 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 not a whole person. So you've sinned somewhere. That's the mentality back then. If that were the case, we would all be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And so for Jesus to look at this paralyzed person and say, Your sins are forgiven. Well, how does he know that this person is sin? Well, they already condemned this man because he's paralyzed. And so who can forgive sin? Only God. And uh, that, that goes to the saying I only God can make us whole again. Mm -hmm. so, but which is interesting is the man that gave the story of the second he walks. So this Matt, he walks away, right? Mm -hmm. So is this the forgiving of sins? Or is this Jesus trying to tell us that um, just because you're born with a with a with a defect or you you become um, defective in some way, blind well, enough. That's a bad term. If you become um, otherly able in some way, if you're right? impaired in some way, yes, you you you're not. It's not because of your sin. It's just because of our bodies. That's the way our bodies work. Um, so, is this Jesus trying to tell us that hey, you're not a sinner. You're just a human being that's yeah. living in a carnal world. They were pretty dumb back in those days, weren't they? We were all. Your worldview, when when you when your worldview is tight and small, right. yeah, it looks like you're dumb because you don't know more things than you than you do. Next, they'll be using leeches. You know, so like that. <laughs> go to the hills of Tennessee, you'll see that. <laughs> okay, which is used um, today. <laughs> Isn't that a hoot? <laughs> is is forgiving a mental task or is it a mark of faith that needs to have action to make it? Does that make sense? Yeah, and I kind of agree with the latter. Because you can forgive somebody, but it doesn't, the forgiveness has to be over a period of time. Just because you say say it doesn't mean it's so. And I, and, and I thought that's where I think this is an important story. Because Jesus says he forgives the sin, right? right. And everybody goes, oh, oh, oh. And they get all up in arms. But in the end, what happens? Action takes place. The man gets up and he walks away. And I think that's the real important part of this, is this message or this story, is that um, we can say, we can use words all the time, but it's our actions that prove our words. And so by, by this man getting up and walking away, it proves that what Jesus said is true. At least in the Pharisees' mind, because this man was a sinner because he's paralyzed. They were amazed. Yes. Uh, <coughs> and then you're, you're right. The, the, the getting up is the proof. It says, which is easier to say, you are forgiven, mm -hmm. or I tell you to get up, take your mat, and go home. Well, of course, I forgive you. That's That's easy. But now the hard part is acting on it. Yeah. Jesus is saying those are both the same thing. He is saying that. In other words, in other words, be careful what you say because your actions will give you away too. Okay. But, but, but we can forgive sin, but when we forgive sin, it's different than when God forgives sin. Exactly. We forgive sin against us. And, we, and then our, no, we say it every day. Don't worry, I forgive you. I forgive you. <laughs> so, so, I get forgiven a lot. <laughs> Wait till you get We all do. <laughs> yeah. but we all need it. Yeah. Okay, any, any more comments, questions about that? Cool. And moving on, Luke 27, 527. 527. This is the story where he calls Levi, the tax collector. Um, I think uh, he said in his task booth, he comes up to the, him and he says, follow me. And Jesus said to him, um, and Levi got up 
and left everything and followed him. And mine it says about join me as a disciple and side with my party in a company. What does that mean? Yeah, it's just they, they're they what they trying to make it more um, political. Correct. Okay. The Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with him. Were they climbing at the table? Yeah. <laughs> but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to, the, to their sect. See, I think that's. To the disciple. I think I think what your what your Bible your translation is trying to do is trying to make that point that we made earlier about the Sadducees, the Pharisees, right. and Jesus was a different teaching than than those. Right. Yeah. So, so he's saying follow me instead of following the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, or whatever right. other groups that were teaching at that time. But I think the the, 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 the interesting thing there is got up, left everything, and followed him. Now, we, we're in chapter 5. Jesus has already got a reputation. He's getting crowds. But what is what did, what did Levi see in him that he just like, just like the fishermen, right? They left their nets, and they followed him. It's like, I would love to meet this guy, Jesus. And you talk about having some some charisma, you know, what is it about Jesus that people just feel that they can trust them with their entire life? Yeah, but you go back to reality. How many people do that, you know? Exactly. That's the, that's the whole I gotta point. Live, you know, who's going to pay the mortgage? I got a wife and seven kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't go down, down the beach fishing with you. You know, I've got to sit there and work for a living. Yeah, and, and, and not only that, but well, Levi's a, a educated man. He's a tax collector. At least he, he knows how to write numbers down, you know. Um, but the others were fishermen, you know. And they, they, he's saying, "Come on, follow me and study under me." Um, wow, that's that, that, that's a, that. I, I I wish I would have I would have that much faith to just follow someone like. If you're not a Trump, they follow him right to the grave. Well, mine says, and Jesus replied to them, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. Yes, yes. And I think that, I think, I think we can, we can apply that today. Yeah. People don't want the church. Most people do not. They do not want the church because they view the church like the common people view the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law. They're holier than thou. They're going to talk down to me. If I was to go, they're going to talk down to me. They're going to you know, make me feel bad about myself. And I don't think Jesus did that. No. I mean, here's, here's a tax collector, and, and you, you, can, you can see that that's a tax collector. He's... He's, pro he's on the lower end of uh, the social uh, ladder, if you will. He might, ha he might have money and everything like that, but he's considered morally you know, deplete when it comes to, to uh, spirituality or, or religion. And, and yet, Jesus asks him to follow him. It's like, wow. I don't know, Michelle, I hate to but it's Levi Matthew. That's okay. According to Eusebius, too, um, Eusebius yeah. wrote uh, a history about um, yeah. the fourth century, and he he says the tradition in the fourth century was that the Levi is, is Matthew. So. No Matthew, Mark, Luke, and yes. John. Yes. <laughs> so. those not free from sin to repentance, to change their minds for the better, and heartily to amend their ways, 
Jesus come to call those who knew they needed to be called. Right. A lot of the religious leaders. They don't admit it. They don't admit it <laughs> exactly. Have you ever Have you ever tried to uh, change a Jehovah's Witness's mind? Oh uh, yeah. Not Usually the door shuts. <laughs> they, 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 they are They are convinced that they are morally. <laughs> You know, above everyone, above else. everyone else, right. and they're going to teach you. And when you come come back at them, and it's kind of like it's kind of like Jesus when he did saw the uh, the rich young the rich young ruler comes to him, mm -hmm. and he says, "Well, what do I need for eternal life?" He goes, "Well, you know the law, just do the law." And he says, "I've done them all, you know, I've held them all, you know." And Jesus says, "There's one thing that you lack." Well, what do you, what, how's that, you know, I'm superior, I've done the law, but yet, at least he had the mindset to see that Jesus had something more to offer, where the religious leaders, they don't want to listen to him, and when he does come back at them, they're like, let's see how we can kill this guy, <laughs> you know, so. Let's give the Sadducees and the Pharisees the benefit of the doubt for a minute. Okay. Okay. And they're they're located in a in a city, in this case Jerusalem and Philadelphia, well, surrounded by Roman soldiers who are pagan for the most part. They're not Jewish, but they're pagan. They have a religion that's been charged with really defeating paganism. They had, to, they had to capture the land, their ancestors captured the land, and they, what did they do? They, they fought the, the pagans, the heathens. Now, along comes another sect called, what, we don't have a name for it yet. Not yet. Huh? The way. Uh, we didn't have that. We got, we got, this is, this is back in the, 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 the really beginning times. Do we want this to have to come up and cause problems later on? I don't think so. I've been told not to. I'm trained not to. That's why the benefit of the doubt. They're, yeah. they're doing what they have been trained to do by the Old Testament up to this point. <laughs> but when you but when you get so focused, then you don't see the blessings that are around you, and the and the the. the and, and if I if I may attack conservatism, that's how I see this. Um, they're so conservative, they have something that will help them convert the pagans to love God and to look to do God's will, right? Mm -hmm. But yet they're so focused on you got to do it this way, you got to do it that way. And anybody that steps outside of that, which Jesus was definitely outside of that, thinking outside the box, um, then you got to put it down. He was fulfilling a prophecy that they had a long time ago. Yeah, that's At true. the beginning, they had the prophecy. Yeah. Um, when Moses got the laws, the prophecy was there. But yet, if you're laser focused, then you're not. You're not. Well, the, the laws didn't say, "I'm going to send my son Jesus." They said, <laughs> "Sacrifice a red heifer." Hey. It's a little different. We got to go from that to this. <laughs> so, so you can see, and and I think I think that um, this is this is where we um, we are today, and the progressive churches of today are thinking outside the box, and we're thinking how do we get people to love God and know that God loves them, and yet there are people that we've been doing this for. You know, our denomination started in, in 1700, and, and this is the way you do it. Well, guess what? Your denomination is about ready to just collapse, and you take all of Christianity with it because you're so set in your ways, and that's the whole thing. So were the Jews when Jesus came. They were so set in their ways that they didn't want to see this wonderful, beautiful thing of loving each other 
as the most important thing to God. That's how you show God you love God, is by loving each other. And I'm preaching. Um, <laughs> so, so I think that, that that's where we are today as well. We are thinking, progressive churches are thinking outside the box. How do we show these people that God loves them, um, that, that want nothing to do with God or Christianity or the church? And uh, then there's the ones that are... Mm-hmm. And where did the... I mean, the Jews are still around, but... It's more of a, a nationality than it is a true religion. Mm-hmm. And the church that I come from back home, um, we, get your religion here. We, um, we do a lot of outreach. The whole church is focused. And I mean, we have like 1,700 members, and we help all different aspects of the community. And I think that is God working through us, through everyone else, to let them know that's what God wants. <laughs> it, it is easy, and that's why he says, you know, my, my yoke is, is light, you know, my burden, right. you know, um, because it, it is, it, if you, the hard part is when you got to love someone that, that really doesn't love you. That's, that's, that's yeah, difficult, that's but, but you can still, you know, you can still do it. It's mm-hmm. not, I mean, it, it doesn't take any money, it doesn't take any, just, just be kind to them. Be kind to them, serve them. Yeah. Sometimes it's impossible, especially if it's through relatives. You know? What you're saying, the example you're giving what you're supposed to do. Ex- exactly. Right. You can't change everyone. And so else. someone may follow that example at their option, but God gets them to it. If you, you set the example up and God grabs them. Mm-hmm. And that's the way it works. What time you got, Sam? Okay. Well, let's let's go ahead and stop there. Um, I was just going to point out the fact that, that Jesus eats with sinners. You know, we we come to church and we, we hang around with people that we know, you know, believe and love the way we do. But what about the people that don't love the way we do? What are we going to cover next week? We're we're starting right there at thirty three five thirty three. The, the 